<laughs> now we feel like MCs, you know? Yeah, very much so. Couple, couple of Kanye Wests up here. This will be great. Okay, so our next guest is a San Francisco transplant, and technically you're a recruiter for Zappos, but yes. in reality, what you are is a storyteller, and that's why I think you'll be a very, very interesting guest. Now, you also feel like you're on a personal campaign to bring people to Vegas? Yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah. so we're going to learn more about that, but please put your hands together for Athena Dunn. Thank you very much for coming out. Appreciate it. Okay, so here's, here's the big thing. The big, the big thing that I wanted to talk to startup entrepreneurs about is that yes. Zappos is now not posting job applications online yes. anymore. Um, will you talk about why this happened and what it means in the sense of a small-time entrepreneur and not in the sense of a yeah. multi-billion dollar yeah. Amazon-owned corporation? Yeah. Like, how can it relate to everyone out oh, there? You listening? do want me to, oh, I thought you, you really want me to hold it. <laughs> I could do that. Okay. I could hold it. <laughs> no, you hold it. You hold it. So, yes, how can you translate, uh, you know, taking down job postings from Zappos? How can it relate to everyone out there running their business or running their own one-person show out there? So, Zappos gets about 30,000 applicants a year, and that's quite a lot. Uh, how many do you think we hired? Less than yeah, less than 30,000. Uh, actually, 1% of the 30,000 were hired. So a uh, lot of inbound flow, um, which leads to a lot of noise. So what were we going to do about it? Uh, so we decided to proactively pipeline uh, and engage candidates before they were even looking for a job. I think the best candidates are the ones that are actually engaged in the brand and wanting to believe in the brand before they even know that there's a job existed or existed for them. So okay. uh, for instance, uh, myself, I, uh, I didn't know of a job at Zappos and I just reached out to the hiring manager and I said, hey, you know, I've loved the brand for 12 years. I absolutely am in love with it. Um, you know, let's keep in touch. It would be great to, to you know, keep in touch. And he's like, actually, I'm, I'm looking for a tech recruiter. I just didn't post the job. Um, so automatically, I had that buy-in that he was looking for and knew that I was like personally invested in the brand. So we're now trying to create an area where we can interact with candidates before they even know of a job posting and we can match them up with the skill set versus them applying for a job. Um, and something that I think is really interesting is that uh, sometimes we go to a site, and, and this can be kind of an audience poll, is um, how many times have you gone to a job site or a company that you've really liked and uh, raise your hand if maybe you didn't see a job description that really fit what you were looking for but you really love the brand and wish you could have gotten a job there. Oh, okay. Good, exactly. Good majority. So by taking down job postings, we're able now to um, engage with you and, and find that perfect role before it even exists or maybe we know it's coming down the pipe and we know that hiring manager is going to want to hire that role in a few months and we can actively engage with you before the role even exists. And, and by taking down job postings, that's allowing us to do that. Okay. Okay, so let's try to frame it more in a sense for a startup entrepreneur. So, yes. like, I, I love that when you're only accepting 1%, but as a startup entrepreneur, yeah. sometimes you, maybe nobody even knows you exist. So how do you um, maybe funnel the same concept into right. a way that's more scalable and, or downscaled? Yeah, exactly. So um, with startups, I think it's good to tell the story about what you're building uh, because if people are invested in the story and know what you're building, uh, they're going to be wanting to, right. to come on board. Um, I think also there's a lot of tips that, uh, that you can take from taking down job postings and really looking at it from an alternative way to recruit. So flipping the recruiting model on its, on its side and not doing job postings, but now doing different, uh, different proactive uh, activities to go out and job hunt or to look for your uh, employees. So, uh, one of them is attend events in the local community. So where are there local hackathons going on? Where are there people building things? Um, have your pitch ready. If you are a startup founder and you have your pitch ready for investors, it's the same pitch that you want to tell uh, your prospective engineers or your prospective employee number two if you're employee number one. Um, know the talent out there. So uh, if you're looking for Ruby engineers, uh, what are the top 20 Ruby engineers in Las Vegas? Um, who are they? Get to know them. Uh, I think that that's something that, you know, maybe you're looking for an iOS in engineer, like everyone is, right? But get to know them. Who are those top 20 engineers? Because they obviously are collaborating and they know people that want jobs as much as they do. 
Um, and uh, speak at events, build your brand. So not only are you building your brand as a, a company, but you're also building your brand as a, a founder or um, a startup employee. So um, get out there Storyteller, and build, yeah. get, out, get out there and build your brand. Uh, who are you? Um, and tell the story. I think that we're so quick to, to throw a job posting out there and instead take a step back and tell the story of what you're trying to solve and what you're trying to build. Um, and then kind of drill down to, okay, and here's how my company fits in the bigger scheme of things. So downtown Las okay. Vegas, for right. example. Um, you know, there's a lot of great stuff going on here, and there's a lot of great, amazing startups happening here. Um, don't start with what you're doing. Start with the bigger picture. I think that that's what got me here, and the bigger picture got me here. And then I, you know, of course, sought out Zappos. But uh, learning about all these different startups is so appealing. And I recruit for both a San Francisco location for Zappos and Las Vegas. And by the time I am done telling the story of what's happening here in Las Vegas, <laughs> I get San Francisco candidates interested in what's going on here. So if you can take a step back and not even talk about your funding or what you're building or what you're trying to disrupt yeah. Uh, and really talk about the big story and the big community and what's going on, I think you can have more buy-in. Okay. Okay, so when I think about the city that we live in, I have lived here long enough that almost this, almost telling the story becomes too complex. Like, it seems sure. like, I'm like, I'm like, are you into education? Are you into healthcare? Are you into sure. um, something else? So when you're in a startup, it's probably something similar where right. you're always saying, like, I know every aspect of this company, so how do I pitch it or how do I right. turn it into a story? But talk about how you take something as complex as, as, as this city in particular mm -hmm. and tell it as a story. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a different story for each person. So I'll tell you my story and how I tell it. Um, similar to the community guest, uh, you know, I was in SOMA recruiting and um, really, really saw SOMA start when 15 years ago, um, before they built the ballpark and before um, companies like Pinterest and Twitter and Dropbox, uh, companies with over a billion dollars valuation were there. Um, before they were there, if you were to tell me that these startups were going to be there 15 years ago, I would have told you you're crazy. Um, there was a homeless problem. There was, a, you know, just the area was not the area that you would think of that startups would be thriving in. Um, so I tell that story in that I missed that boat. I was, I was still in college and I was seeing it happen. Um, and when these startups were starting to thrive and that community was starting to form, I missed that boat. So. To be able to see that that's being mirrored here in downtown Las Vegas and that there oh, is yeah. that not gonna amazing, miss this boat, huh? I'm not going to miss that boat. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I get goosebumps thinking about it because it's it's such a unique community. Yep. I just need there. to check. i got to make sure you're not a liar, right? Okay. Maybe they're freckles. Okay. Um, I do get goosebumps fake? talking about you it. You faked the goosebumps for the <laughs> podcast? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, I think that there is something really special going on here, and that's what compelled me to be here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, so let's talk about how you get someone to come. Like, so you have a, you might have a good story. You might say, "Wow, that's that's a great story." But how are you tailoring the story in a way that motivates people to come work for my or other startups? Right. So it's all about tailoring your story. I think a candidate wants an engaging outreach. So. Uh, startup founders, uh, people that are you know, co-founders or employee number one or two aren't recruiters, they're not HR. So I must say, like, tailor your outreach. Make sure you're, that you're interested in learning about, oh, what they're building, their blog. Learn more about them and, and see oh, okay. what kind of interests them and be able to cater your story to that. So um, for, exi you know, for example, a downtown podcast, you know, if someone was really interested in that, and in that industry out in San Francisco, I would get them engaged and send them information on what's going on down here in the awesome community that comes here and interacts That's with you cool. guys. Um, so I think tailoring your story is something that is is worth doing and is worth that extra effort. Okay. All right. So we want to make sure people can reach out to you if they want to have follow-up questions. So you are on Twitter. But Althea, yes. A-L-T-H-E-A-415. You can follow her on Twitter. And thank you very much yes, for coming out and talking you. to us. All right. Thank you. All right.